Hi, my name is Mary Jabalisco and, and welcome to our latest video. What, we'll, what we will be doing in this video is, is painting the featured painting together step by step. Be sure that you have read through the material and you've assembled your supplies. If you need any, any supplies, you can of course go to kingsland.com and we'll be happy to send them to you. So get out your materials and let's get started. Well, here we are back at the still life. And this is a, a kind of a fun still life, a little different than the others that we've done. One thing is that it, it has a left hand, left hand light source, whereas before we've been using the uh, right hand light source. And so I'm putting down my light value on the side of the light and just working with a, a palette that has, at this point, just I've mixed my copper colors and I've mixed my greens and what you'll notice are the copper colors quite bright to quite dull, light to dark. And you have the the mixes on, on how to how to make each one of these. And color mixing, it's just a lot of practice. Just anything that you've ever done, you have to do some experimentation to see if you add this much of this you'll get that. And it's it's very difficult for me to in these quick videos to go through a lot of how to color mix just because the focus is more on uh, painting this particular piece. But it really is just training your eye. So there is the light value. I'm going to drop down to my medium value. Initially this copper pot is going to be quite light and bright in appearance and what will make it duller is when we come back and add the illusion of a, a patina, how when copper starts to oxidize what it starts to look like. And we'll add that on at the end. But as you can tell with my blending using my uh, number 10 filbert, and you could maybe be a little bit smaller even using an 8, but what you can see is I'm doing real choppy brush strokes and my surface is prepped gray. You can start on the white of the canvas. It can, it can be any light color. So there's my light and my medium. A little bit darker. And this pot is cupping under. Now do notice that I have, I think, pretty good elliptical shapes drawn here. I used my ellipse template that I always use. It just really, you know, if you have even a tiny bit of astigmatism, sometimes it's difficult to tell if you have your ellipses correct or not. So here is the, the medium value going on, or pardon me, the first dark going on both sides of the medium. Again, choppy strokes. And I actually have, because this is for the size of the painting, this is a, a relatively large container, so I have three darks. So this is the, the second dark down. So we should probably call that dark that's next to the medium, that's the high dark, higher in value. The one I just added is the dark, and now coming in with low dark. low dark lowest in value. I think that looks pretty good for especially that because I want choppy blending can also come back in. This really starts that look of a patina coming back in with your your mop. And this one appears to have a little bit of something from a previous adventure, and that's good. Adding a little bit more color. But now it's all blended. Just how it should look for this this first go round. Oh, let's 
jump over to this this uh, green container. I think that I will go to a smaller brush based on the, the size there. So I'm picking up a, a six flatter. You can use a filbert. And again, this will look fairly pristine until we come back and, and add some of the, the wear and tear. And just as in all still lifes, I was thinking, oh, that's going to cast a really great shadow from the egg onto the container. But I'm not going to do anything with that at this moment. That is, we want that, we want to develop each object as if it were independent. Then you come back and add cast shadows and shines and all of that. So there is the light in the medium. I think I'm going to lighten up the light just a little bit with some warm white just to make it apparent. Now getting gradually darker. side as well. Again you can come back with your mop. This is um, a modeled looking ceramic type uh, container. That's all we need to do to that. Let's go back over to our copper and put in the inside. What you can see here is the, the colors that I've mixed for the inside of the container. And then these values are the ones that will be used over on the, um, the other little container. So let's go ahead and, and do the inside of this copper pot. I just, I love that it's kind of a, a more of a pewtery color on the inside. So let's get started with that. Still lifes, you always have to think, where's the light coming from? And in this case, the light's coming from the right Therefore, it's going to be the lightest on the inside. Pardon me, the light's coming from the left, so it'll be the lightest on the inside, on this right-hand side. And I'm going to paint over the back rim, but not the front rim, because what I'm actually working on is the, the inside of this container. And so there's the light, the medium, respecting those elliptical shapes, moving around, getting gradually darker because we're moving away from the light that's coming in this way, so it's going to be darker on that opposite side. quite dark on this particular side. And as I mentioned before, it's the contrast between the lights and the darks that makes something look metallic. Just even out, evening out my elliptical shape, plus trying to scoot a little bit of that dark across the back just to roll that under and then there is dark to, to start to create that lip so again I just took um, our first dark and just scooted it along now in the uh, front section it's it's kind of interesting it's a little bit metallic and a little bit copper so I'm going to put the light here, but leaving a tiny space down at the bottom. Getting 
a little bit darker moving across. And notice on the front of the container the darks are just exactly following the darks that are down below. So if you have dark value here, you know that you'll have an equivalent dark up above. So I've just laid in the values, in essence, just the same as, as the front of the container. Now, I'm going to add, just to get this started, a little bit of the copper color on the bottom of this lip area. Again, just using the coordinating color as we go across. I also think it wouldn't be a, a bad idea at this point to add the start of a of the underneath lip. So just coming in with the, the darkest value from the copper scale. just to keep that separate a little bit. And of course when it's dry, we can, we can strengthen things even more. Just scooching out over that handle. Well, let's, let's revisit um, the green container. Just the same as before, we're going to put on the inside using a different color. And this time it's it's the uh, brown scale. And of course the light will be on the opposite side because of our light source. So there's the light and the medium. much darker as we move away from the light source, the light that travels in a straight path. Again, the blending can be quite choppy. And it can be dark across the back. This handle it's a cylinder shape, therefore there is a dark value on both sides. I'm going to place the mid value through the center. And then on the top of that, I'll see if I can put in some light and keep it holding. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Then we'll put in the front. First I'm going to establish the, the light on the spout. Now coming in with mid value.
and that's a little vague in that area, but let's see if I can reestablish it from the inside. If not, let's try. Then the, the base is also in the brown tones. place mainly medium value. Eventually this will be so dark you probably won't even hardly be able to see it. We still have to treat it independently so medium and, and dark. And then let's finish up the handle by placing dark in the middle of this hollow handle. There's dark all the way around the outside. And then the balance is medium. So after you have uh, these items painted, it's probably, you know, if you're working with the Genesis, it might be a good time to dry. And then we can move on to the to the next sections. Put a little bit of light just to find those edges. All right, good enough for this go round. Let's uh, let's move on to the next items. I'm going to base coat these eggs in white that has a little touch of raw sienna. dying to put the reflection of the eggs into the copper, but everything has a time and it's just not time yet. Just basing these in, making sure it's they're really smooth. With these white eggs, mainly at this point we'll just put a crescent of dark on, especially the right side and a little bit on on the side of the light on the left. And I'm adding this crescent of dark using the, the browns from the the green pot, the brown and the green pot scale. And as always I'm not worried about anything casting a shadow from one area onto another just because we're not there yet. Just make sure they're really round. Um, any wobbles down at the bottom you can fix with the table, but you probably want to fix anything that you see at this moment on these other objects. Probably want to fix that now. I'm attempting to add a little bit of a highlight. I came in with cool white, cool white, white that has an eyelash of a blue in it and that seems to to hold and make a difference. What will make our eggs look kind of snazzy is when we put all the reflected color onto them. Let's uh, do a little bit on on the handle on the front of the copper and then I think we need to put our background in before we pro progress much farther. I'm going to base this handle in in the very dark gray.
You can switch to a round if, if you care to. I'm not going to do anything with the actual uh, bail just because I'd like to have the background in first. Now I am going to switch to a, a round brush. Adding the lights. And I'm going to come back over when it's dry and add some of the you know the attachment parts. Is this handle section? There's the lights. Blending those in. There's a screw that goes on top also, but we can wait on that. Just a strong hook like thing that goes around. And of course, it carries on up above, but again, until we put our background in. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to shape this a little bit more with some of that really dark gray. We certainly don't want that to get lost. And that's where our, our screw will go. And that's all we need to do to, to that at this at this moment. Of course I've just loaded my brush again because I can't I love to paint still life so much I don't ever want to stop. So that's what we need to do here. Um, let's let's put in our background and then we can add everything else. As you can see I've taped off a a little bit here and a little bit here so I can just do the background no tape on the actual paint and then uh, pull that off and we'll do the the table. Now again the, one of the important things in still life is how light travels in a straight path therefore our light here hits here and then interestingly it hits in that on that back wall you have to think of that back wall as a a still life object and so it hits on this back wall on the right side and then gets gradually darker again. And I kind of like that that actually happens because then what, what happens is you get your light objects up against a dark background and your dark objects or dark side of your objects up against the light. So it just makes it a little bit more dramatic. So that's the light of the the background. Dipping a little bit into extender and the only reason for that is to make the paint move a, a smidge. Trying to put in a diffused background. Your eye wants to always go to crisp contrast and so we don't want the eye to go to this background so I'm putting in a diffused background that the blending is very smooth. It's not crisp in any way. 
because if it were, then the eye would want to linger and say, hmm, this must be interesting back here, so I think I'll hang out and take a look. But in a still life, unless you're going for some special effect, in general, you you don't want the eye to linger in the background. You want it to linger where you want it to, which is your center of interest area. I'm also trying to do what's called a portrait background, that very, very diffused background. And that's when you take your brush and you just make short little X-y strokes and it, it keeps it very diffused. And I'll go back and make sure that I've painted, because I'm doing this a little quicker than I would normally, but I'll go back and make sure that I'm real crisp and tight up against my objects. So there's the light side. The light, a little bit of medium. And we're not going to make this background really, really dark, because if you have dark objects in front, it makes sense that you'd want to have a um, a, a relatively light background to pop those forward. And I am picking up just slip slaps of green now and again just to to help repeat the the green of the pot. And a little bit darker. And in general you want to take your corners and and do a, almost a vignette so that the eye corners are just arrows out of the composition so if you if you round and darken when you hit a corner the eye will be more likely to to stay in it's almost like we have to trick people to keep looking at our painting You can slip slap a little bit of the dark and the light and vice versa just to, to give it some texture. And I like that little bit of greenish in the background because it just sets off the, the orangey red of our container. back with some reds of the the copper container, the first dark. Watch as you don't get a halo around this pot. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to pull these little pieces of tape off and we can do the the foreground. Now the foreground will make it a little bit lighter and warmer. It's coming away from the background, it's coming to the light. It'd be the lightest here, just where our light is coming in. Again, that path of light hits here, hits here, hits back there. So nice, warm and light in the front. Again, a concern of ours is not shadow work yet. Our concern is treating the top of this table like it is a top of a cube. Therefore, it's going to go from light to medium and then gradually get darker as it moves back. Again, we want to have this look like a very rough texture. Everything is so smooth, so we want this foreground to be a, a little bit rough, looking like a, a stone-type table. And with the mid value. 
You notice that, that the table color is about the same as the background, but it has just a little bit more raw sienna in it, so it's it's uh, projecting forward. And then we'll put our dark value in. Picking up a little bit of the orange from the copper just to make that a little bit warmer. And if the, the background and the table run together, that's fine because we can, we can separate it easily enough, especially through shadow work. And again, I'll go back and make sure that, I might even blend that, but I'll go back sure and make sure that my, I've painted neatly around my objects. I'm going to come back in with, with warm white and really strengthen the front of the, the table. We just definitely want that to be light. Again, the choppy blending. And you can go back and pounce it with a mop if that's helpful. Now we have the next section down. This was nice that this was just exactly a half inch in width, which was what my tape was. You can reuse this piece of tape. You can treat yourself to a fresh one. This uh, thickness of this of the table is slightly darker than that uh, front edge, but it's about all one value, just because it's parallel to the light source, so it doesn't it doesn't gradate as it goes across. Definitely don't leave this where the tabletop and the thickness of the table meet. Don't let that get too crisp, which it is because you put tape there. So you do want to come in and blend that. this tape off. And now we need to have the whole bottom section much, much darker. And that visual weight that we need at the bottom. This is what's known as a molly dog hair right there, but I'll get that out. using the, actually the, the dark of the copper down at the bottom here. There is a, right where the molly dog hair is, there is a crack that goes in that I think we can get started now. I have to get that out. strengthen that later. This is pretty much just fill in the blank, this section here. So go ahead and fill that in and uh, then we'll come back and add our handle and keep progressing on this little still life. I went ahead and uh, base coated in the, the handle just with the dark gray and working in a few preliminary lights and this can be even stippled in and what that shows is the the texture just using the three out spotter or you could use the the tip of a liner Blending it 
down in a bit. Then on this opposite side, there's a little bit of of light showing, but I think in that section we can actually attribute it to some reflected light. So I'm going to come in with orange, actually orange tint. I'm using the zero mop just to push it down in just a little bit. And then a whisper the rest of the way just to give it some form. I'm also going to place a little bit more of the dark gray back in on the side opposite of the light. So this right side. while I have this on my brush, I can darken a few areas that, that need it. Why waste good paint? But this light area looks too perfect, so beat that up a little bit. Now what the actual support that goes over the, the top of this bale is copper material. I'm going to define this just a tiny bit more with some black. And then I'm going to add medium copper color. This is what the handle is actually looping through. This is just a very long teardrop shape running down the middle. Shading this with the dark on the side of the dark, the right. To show that this is rounded, adding a highlight, especially up at the top, and then letting it fade down. Now it's giving that handle something to, to go through. Just re-establishing that light one more time. This is kind of a complicated little section because there's also a little bit of copper showing on either side. Medium value. And then shading with some dark. Okay, let's move on and we do have a little bit of an onion to put in. Just using the same greens from green pot. Just convenient and it just helps repeat those colors. I can barely see my tracing through the table. If uh, if you can still see your tracing then good enough. You can or you can freehand it or you can transfer it back on. I'm using the the lightest from the table. 
and I'm going to use that same lightest from the table and add just a little bit of a highlight running through the middle. Coaxing that green down. Help shade the top of that onion. And then the dark brown from the background, putting on that root end. I like this onion for many reasons, but the main one is it's going to give us a really great shadow. Secondary reason is I like to eat them. And another reason is it just repeats that green. Coming back through and accentuating the, the crack. Just using the darkest brown. And a little bit of light on the right side of that crack. That helps to, to make it more apparent and more realistic. Maybe a little bit on the, on the other side as well. we're to the point where everything needs to be dry so that we can come in with all of our, our final work. We're going to just go back and start right back where we started and add all of the interesting characteristics, shines, shadows, etc. I'm taking the, the darkest value from the copper and metal gets very streaky and so I'm streaking on a, a few darks over in this section. A little bit on this rim. Then I'm going to streak in some of the dark green and that will function as reflected color, irregular function, uh, irregular reflected color because of the streaky nature and no extender is used it's just uh, a dirty brush with you know fairly dry paint then streaking in some of the light value this is actually some reflected light bouncing off of maybe the table, the wall, some object we don't have to know. And if this looks chalky, lacking in pigment, um, just pick up some red. Over on this bottom, dry brushing in some dark to give it the look that this pot is cupping under in this area. And then coming back in with a little bit of red as reflected color. Just a little bit of color in that area just adds a great deal. And then coming back on top causing a value change with a lighter color. come back in with some black and make this area a little bit more irregular. You can put on some dirty marks with the black. 
while I have this black in my brush, I'm going to get much darker and stronger under that lip. If the black appears too harsh, you can switch to black plus burnt umber. I think, because I have this black in my brush, I'm going to strengthen under this little rim. And inside. In other words, I'm going back mainly and strengthening with the, the dark in these areas, the original dark areas. Still working on the objects themselves, nothing to do with cast shadows. to be a little bit more defined. darks are really helping create the dramatic form that is so desirable in a still life. And again coming in with a dirty brush and modeling this just a bit. And then up on this rim adding a little bit of green. And then switching to the reddish color from the copper pot. It's going to bring these two disconnected objects together. We've ignored the eggs up until now. We can shade these just a tiny bit more just to help enhance the form. And then of course uh, some reflected light color actually. Just a little bit the medium value from the brown section. Well, all of those adjustments need to be dry so that we can add our final shines and shadows. I have my spotter brush loaded with warm white, white with a little dot. Usually I use yellow, but in this case I picked up some orange just to stay more with the, the color scheme that we have going on. 
and I'm placing down this very bright light in all the places where the light is striking our still life objects directly. This is an old container, therefore the, the light is quite mottled. And as you notice, I, I put down the shine, and then, believe it or not, I take my 3 out and flatten it and turn it into a teeny, teeny, tiny little flat and disperse out the edges of the shine. And again, the stipply shine works the best because it really shows the texture of the, of the container. The brightest shine has to be up in this area, so I'm going to take off a little bit down in here. And if it ever looks chalky or bleached out looking, that's when you can come back in. I have my brush loaded with one of the light values. You can add some light values uh, near, just to help the, ease the transition. Again, just coming back in those those light areas, and if it's an area that needs to be made a little bit lighter, come in with copper light rather than warm white. Well, one thing that I did do that I forgot to do was I put on the reflection of the of the eggs. Now coming back and just enhancing that just a little bit. I like to put these shines down and then briefly look away and think, oh my gosh, it could be a little bit lighter. On the eggs, a little bit of a highlight. They're not too shiny, so don't let them become too shiny. Obviously putting a shine in from the egg. This is a ceramic glaze, so we can just put down a shine and just pretty much leave it alone because the light's going to strike it, just bounce right off. You don't have to build this too, too much. But again, if it looks chalky or bleached, definitely means that you need to go back and, and uh, drop down in value. So for example on the inside, I don't think I'll start that light. I'll start to build the light with the last value used from the brown scale. Now come back in the middle of that. I'm going to knock some of the shines down because they're all the same and we don't 
we don't want to have everything exactly the same. And over on this side, there's a shine. I just filled that just a little bit. I'd like to find this back edge. I think I'll find it. Just do a little experiment and see if orange would be a better choice than the warm white. And it seems to work. I think all that we have left to do is to add our shadows, so let's just jump in and do that. On this particular piece, we'll just use black that has a little bit of burnt umber in it. Considering our light's coming from the left, that means that our shadows are going to go over to the right. The shadows go back, don't let them come forward. This egg is close enough to this pot that it's going to cast a shadow onto the little uh, green pot on the, the green section. Then we have to have a strong set down line under this container. I guess the eggs as well. Now I'll disperse that out. Somewhat losing the bottom of that green container. Now it's come forward a little too much, so I'll just come in and wipe it back. Find that back edge just slightly of the of the table, and this front edge also. This is when you can come in and and add some of the interesting little shapes. Now this egg is going to cast a little bit of a shadow on the back egg. Place the shadow under the copper pot. Notice the shadow is going up onto the copper pot just a little bit, just to anchor it down.
And because this pot has a little bit of an overhang to it, you can have some of the shadow going out in front. shadow here to help set this down. And then of course there's a, a contact shadow under the onion. And to show that the onion is falling away from the table, we'll offset that shadow just a little bit. Our, our little still life. I guess the next step would be to just take your brush and walk it around and see if there's any place else that could be made a little bit darker. As you can tell I'm thinking that obviously underneath this shelf could be made a little bit darker but um, it just Check your reference material. Make sure that the shadows are falling uh, to the right this time. Set it aside for a little bit, then pull it back out again and see if there's anything that you can add to make it just uh, a little bit better. I tweaked my paintings for, for quite a while, but um, I'm pretty pleased with the way this has come out. And like I said, I'll put it away and then I'll, I'll look at it in a while and decide if there's anything else that I, that I should add. But otherwise, finish it up and I'll see you next time.